But this time we're going to let him fail, so don't click. Go ahead and reset it. Okay, let's let this one be a okay, win. I think you can move. Oh. Can you go over there? In today's masterclass, I'm working with Jenny, who is a current free flight student. In fact, she just started. So this is serving as part of her in-home where I see what the initial training looks like. Her bird is about a year and a half old, still acting like a baby. And her goal today is to just have me see what the training looks like so we can take that and shape it into what it needs to be to be able to get her bird eventually outdoors. So to begin, we had Walter, the blue and gold macaw, taking short flights over to Jenny. I've been trying to like work with him on his he want to fly to me before, you know, I stick my hand up. Um, As you say, you your hand up. Yeah. <laughs> so I will I'll intercept here for a second. You were as you were talking, you had you were queuing. Oh, checks. Okay. Right? So you owe him for that one. Oh man. No, it's okay. It's too late now. So just be aware the moment your hand goes up, that is the cue. Say his name on this one. Okay. Hand up. Well, that was huge. Either way, but you can still treat him. Okay. Hold <laughs> it. And then make sure you only click at the moment he lands on your hand. Okay. Sorry. That wasn't it. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what happened is you weren't ready. He flew anyway, and you clicked. Indicating now the behavior I want. Okay. And so if, you, if he's flying to you more, I know, but I know I'm just gonna block the view for a second. So <laughs> so basically you told that behavior he's like gonna go up and that behavior there. that you got, you're telling him Wow, that is not cool. <laughs> you were telling him like, yeah, I want more of that. Even though it wasn't exactly what you wanted. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And during the process, Walter threw out so much body language. Since there were so many little handling things that had to be cleaned up and we couldn't address this while Walter was continuing to try to work harder and harder and faster that we just couldn't keep up, we put Walter away for a little bit so we could kind of debrief that interaction and come up with a game plan for what it looks like when we take him out a little bit later. So now we have Walter back out and we're working on just cleaning up the handling that Jenny has with Walter. and. You'll see that I took a moment and I stopped by uh, standing in front of Walter, in between him and Jenny, and I looked at him and it was typical baby body language, but then it switched. And he actually flew to me and attacked me. They also don't click. Go ahead and reset it. Okay, let's let this one be a okay, win. I think Call you move. Oh. Can you go over there? And I will say that this has never happened in a flight training course. It's never happened at a master class. In fact, I haven't had this experience with anybody else's birds ever. It, it kind of caught me off guard, but it served as an awesome opportunity to show where I made a mistake and how we correct that during the course of the master class. The first observation is that Walter's motivation level seemed a lot higher than I wanted it to be and than I needed it to be for this class. So to help fix this, I knew that I needed to reward him. So I started to reward him when he went onto the perch. There we go. Should I give him a smaller one? Nope. No. We need to fill him up with a call. Call him. Nice. Perfect. Let's add another win on this. And then the one after this will be filled. Let's see if I can turn around. I don't know if he will. So this time work on your timing to make sure that you're calling him when he's ready. So we're going to start working on that cue being associated with him. There. Oh, Walter. Nice. Perfect. Okay, now this one's going to go. Yes, we'll allow a fail here. Did he get a treat for going okay. back on the perch? He's looking at me now. A little less aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> Walter. So that you asked him, so we'll treat that. Okay. You did. This, oh, she so never was, treated him. I was it supposed to Okay. So this one just wait and there'll be no click. You'll just catch him. But we're gonna let him come before you put your hand up. We'll just let you catch him. Perfect reset. And this time when you walk backwards, keep your hands by your side and call him. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, okay. Nice. Cool. We'll treat there. I'll treat him again down here because that seems to help him de escalate a little bit. One of the keys to this is to give Jenny more time to get back, I instructed her to place Walter on the perch facing away. To help make that possible, I would give a slightly larger treat when she would set him down. So he was facing away from her, giving her time to get back. He would eat the treat that I would give him. And you see his intention and aggression towards me really start to simmer down. And he became expectant of receiving a treat from me when he went back to the perch. This was the first step that I took in associating me positively. Once we had got his aggression out of looking at me to literally fly to me and attack me, then we could focus on Jenny's handling. And what we noticed in this particular situation is that the way Jenny would catch Walter versus the way I would catch Walter was completely different. At a glance, you might think we're doing the same thing, but when you look at the footage closer, you could see that the way I held my hand versus the way she held her hand set the bird up for success or failure. Ultimately, our goal is to have Walter land on the hand. Now, a misconception is that we're taking our thumb and we're pinching it down and we're keeping that bird from being able to go anywhere or move, and that's not really it. The way I instructed Jenny to think through this is that our hand is there to feel what the intention is of Walter. I could tell if he was immediately getting frustrated before he would bite. I could tell if he was leaning back to the perch before he tried to fly. And think of using your thumb with a bird this size as a way to just feel the intention prior to it escalating to a point where you're going to be bit. That, oh. Yes. Okay, so now your recall is gonna be, your cue's gonna be here now. Okay. <laughs> yep. Walter. Nice. There you go. Sorry, Walter. Sorry, Walter. Sorry, Walter. Sorry, Walter. Let go. Again. Walter. What in the... Way harder. <laughs> Way up there. Walter! Don't let it go down. Lift your fingers up. Okay, no. so there you go. His momentum. Can you, can you feel the difference as he's like starting to shift and figure it out with you? If you're struggling with the same thing that Jenny is here with handling Walter in a specific way where his feet stay on her hand, I'll give you a few tips. First, I want you to imagine having a very rigid platform for your bird to land on. If your bird is landing on here and it's weak or floppy, it's going to land here where it's probably got a little bit more rigidity to it. There is an accidental reinforcement when that happens because this is more stable than this. So make sure that that is a very solid platform for your bird to land on. The next tip is once your bird is on your hand, make sure that it is the highest point out of this immediate area. Meaning, it's a common problem for a bird to land and the person to allow this. Even if you hold it all rigid, this happens a lot of times, or this happens. And what that does is it gives a perfect pathway to a self-reinforcing spot on your shoulder. If that's happening to you, when your bird lands, feel free to kind of cock your rest of your arm down so your wrist is bent and your hand is the tallest, firmest spot in this vicinity. It doesn't have to be above your head, but you wanna make sure that you have this type of posture versus this type of posture. If you're still struggling, then you really want to isolate just this section. And that was something that Jenny was running into quite a bit. Because there is a history of reinforcement of landing anywhere, getting clicks and getting rewards for landing sloppy, we'll call it, and it will be something we clean up. Then we go to the extreme and we say, the bird's picture is this right now. But if you make it this, that is now the only thing the bird is focusing on when it comes into land. So by not only making it rigid, you've also lowered this section, so you're less likely to have the bird climb up here. But now instead of this sight picture for landing, the bird has this sight picture for landing, you've really solved most of those options. You've taken away most of the options that would lead to bad habits. And whenever possible, make sure that you are clicking for the exact picture of what you want to see repeated. If you have slow clicker timing and the bird lands here and then you click by the time it does this, this is what the bird's going to think you want, and it's going to continue to do that. And it'll be a lot harder to break that habit because you've said, yes, that's the exact behavior I want you to do more of, but then you change your mind later. So by creating good clicker timing habits, that'll be great. Additionally, if you start to get a little bit of slop in your training and you're getting where the bird lands here and keeps one foot over, as long as the bird is willing, you can try to reinforce with the treat over here. So once the bird lands, it knows to turn its head this way towards the treat which makes landing here 
one extra step to have to go over to get the treat over here. So make sure you're reinforcing on your hand, and if possible, try reinforcing just slightly over to one side so it keeps your bird's attention and all of your bird's body weight towards the direction you want, as opposed to the direction you don't want. Although throughout the course of today's masterclass, we were able to establish a starting point, we were able to get moving in the right direction, there's still another six to 12 weeks worth of work to do. So in a couple of days, we're going to actually be heading over to Jenny's place to be able to do an in-home and she has some homework to do between now and then, but I can't wait to see what happens here in just a couple of days. So we just left Jenny's place in Houston, Texas, where we went to her shop for a follow-up just two days after she was at the masterclass and what a transformation it has been. She went from really, really struggling on how to handle Walter to having amazing success. That handling looks totally different. Yeah, totally day. different. Well, I guess, what do you guess someone that has to take away some person, huh? It's like... <laughs> still chewing. still chewing. Careful with your Yeah, nice. Cool. She's catching him right, she's paying attention to what he wants, and what a cool indoor area that she has to be able to work on all the different flight skills. And I do have to say, we're six weeks out from her potential graduation outdoors, and just two days ago it was hopeless. <laughs> but now after seeing how the handling's improved, this bird is so driven and motivated and at the perfect age to be developing these skills and already has a lot of the skills. If we can get her timing and her handling matched up with the potential that Walter has, we're going to be outside in six weeks without problems. So I can't wait to see what happens next.